New York, New York. New York be about the Knicks, huh? But the best thing about New York City is... Everybody, it is the New York Knicks podcast episode 549, part of Dash Radio. You could also go to the New York Knicks podcast.com slash ticket club and get 20% off an annual membership using code NYKP. We got Mark as usual, and we got special guest David. How you doing, David? What's going on, guys? Happy to be here. Thanks for joining Dave us. Is, uh, Dave is my brother, and he is a huge Knicks fan, and he is here to add... Uh, more Knicks talk to the long, Knicks already show. Long, long time fan, long time sufferer. I said I, I talk Knicks once they were worth talking about. They are worth talking about. And season 12 of the podcast, here you are. <laughs> <laughs> it only took 12 years to be worth talking it took 12 about. 12 years. Yeah, exactly. Um, this is so since our last show, the Knicks lost the Pacers, beat the Bucks, lost to the Cavs, beat the Sixers. They won two and two. And it was one of these weeks where as a Knicks fan, you were like, hmm, should I, uh, are we, are we awesome or do I want to kill myself? It's kind of in between a weird week as a Knicks fan. Uh, Dave, what do you think of this week? You know, I think that, um, in the best case scenario, you got a lot of new guys that are really meant to be core to what the team is going to be this year that are figuring out their roles and meshing with the old guys, um, I, I mean, what an inconsistent week, right? Like they start the season five and one, and now they're like just switching off wins and losses. And they're, they're what are they, living and dying by the three and then getting beat up by teams that just hit threes when they shouldn't be. Right. I mean, is it is it bad to be a team that lives and dies by the three? I mean, the Warriors were a team that lived and died by the three, but they were really good at hitting the three. Well, I mean, they is- had two of the best three-point shooters of all time, so that's not really a fair comparison right they just live by the three they didn't really die by it. you know players i guess is it a bad strategy to be three like the knicks are shooting about 10 threes more a game is that a bad strategy or is it something it, it, like the nba the knicks were near the bottom of the league and shooting threes last year we want them to shoot more threes right so so last year they were they they obviously shot a lot fewer threes but they had a really high shooting percentage for those threes right so Mm -hmm. they were number one in the nba actually yeah so um when i say live and die by the three i mean obviously the offense matters but it seems like their offense is doing pretty well this year they're scoring a lot of points right Uh, they got a lot more balanced uh attack a lot more people are hitting threes um i think what's killing them is the number of threes the other teams are hitting too i mean it does uh, not help when you're not guarding the, the Knicks. Like, apparently, have given up the most open threes in the NBA by a wide margin, which is yeah. not helpful. I guess what is why are they giving up so many open threes? I guess that's that's a big question right now. Like, why is this happening? And since no one wants to answer, what, why is uh, what happening? Can you why are they, why are they giving up so many open threes? Why is this happening? Their, is, this a, is this on purpose? Like their backcourt is Kemba's not the same Kemba. He's a step slow. Um, th- their backcourt just isn't really good at defending. So, I-, I mean, hopefully they come up with a defensive scheme where they can, I don't know, switch or get out there a little quicker. But uh, they're a step slow right now, and, and other teams so are getting open shots. The Knicks' right. general right. strategy has always been to kind of qu- – like everyone kind of – everyone kind of le- – like st- like – Everyone tries to kind of go towards the paint a little bit and leave guys open and then recover on guys. That's what they did all last season was they would leave guys open but kind of recover on them in the last second. And that strategy seems to not work as well this season. I mean, also, a, a team gets hot, they get hot. You wouldn't think Ricky Rubio is going to have a career. Not, I, I would think Ricky Rubio, you could leave him open for three the entire night, the entire season, and not really suffer. They, you don't expect all- him to dominate. <laughs> They also got hurt on the three in that Indiana game, if I recall. Yes. Um, it was like unexpected guys hitting threes. Um, I mean, I wonder if part of the problem is, you know, last year, uh, you know, they're, they're, the middle really dominated, right? Noel. Yeah. Uh, uh, what's, Robinson. What, what's his name? Yeah. Mitch Robinson when he was playing, when he wasn't hurt. Um, and then Taj Gibson. I mean, they like clogged up the middle last year. 
Um, it seems like they're, <laughs> I don't know how much, how many minutes they've all played, but Taj hasn't played a lot. Noel's been hurt a couple of times now. Mitch is out the last couple of games. So maybe that is part of it that they feel like they need to now collapse inside and they're leaving people open outside. That's a very good point. Yeah. I mean, I, Noel and Mitch played what one game together too. Yeah. I, I think they over double. I think they're doing a lot of too much double teaming. They, they tend to like kind of, everyone tends to like kind of like lean towards the paint because they're worried about that. Maybe they should stay on their man a little more, at least just stay on the stay on shooters a little more. So yeah. Noel and, and Mitch are both injured right now. We're still paying Noah. Can't we just be like, hey, bitch, we've been paying you for the last four years. Can't you just stand in the middle for like 10 minutes? Just do he something. He was at the Chicago game. I mean, they could have just given him a jersey. Yeah, just like, throw a jersey at him. Get yeah. on the court. <laughs> we we got Chicago, to a seat. <laughs> I thought Chicago owed us a thank you. We paid no one to be there for their game. So, Jesus. um, I, so the wh- one thing that, uh, so Dave, one thing that Jay has been doing all these years is something called a Nick effect where he goes through the games at the end of the year or somewhere in the year where he finds so many guys have like their crew, their se- best night of the whole season against the Knicks. And I thought we were kind of, uh, this was behind us, but like this year, Ricky Rubio has the game of his entire life. Miles Turner could miss a three. He's not really a three-point shooter. Uh, I, I to a certain extent, I feel like uh, some of this stuff just evens out over a cross course of a regular, a long season. There's always gonna be nights where a team just hits their threes, but I think a lot of stuff will look better twenty games from now. I mean, I think part of this is also just the the Garden effect. Everyone wants to play at the Garden. Everyone wants to put their best foot forward at the Garden, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe that's a hokey are, answer, but or maybe the Knicks just bring that out in teams, but it might be the garden. I mean, you know, th- there's a lot of lure of people coming in for the last, I mean, as long as I've been a Knicks fan, I mean, you go back to like 95 when Jordan comes back, drops 55 at the garden. Um, it's just a thing to torch the Knicks on their home court. Right. I mean, going with that theme, the Knicks lost both games at home and they, they won both games on the road this week. Yeah. Um, I mean, they, it was a kind of, so the Pacer game, Miles Turner had a bunch of crazy threes. It was just a frustrating game because the Pacers could not miss from three. Then the Bucks came. Game comes. The Bucks are up by I think the score was 357 to nothing at the end of the first quarter, and somehow the Knicks like just came back and won that game. It was a goddamn awesome performance, and you get so excited like the Cavs, the goddamn Cavs, and then the Cavs shoot a. I think the Cavs shot 120 percent from three which is like, they, they couldn't miss from three. Like with I mean, their eyes closed, they couldn't miss. Of all those games, that second half of the Bucks game was the only bit of Knicks basketball I didn't watch. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Mark and I, caveat, were at the Cavs game. So, um, you know. I was super excited to see them in person. I don't see them that in person that often. The tickets are expensive. They, they should win. They should. I should let them know I'm coming and they, they should win that night. I never know um, what so, to expect from this team. It's like they lose to the Pacers, and I'm like, maybe they're not as good as I think. Uh, do I even need to watch the the Bucks game? And then they beat the Bucks, and I'm like, all right, I guess they're really good. And then they lose to the Cavs. I'm like, well, shit, I was wrong. They suck again. And then they beat the Sixers. But I'm not too excited about the Sixers. They were missing, what, nine of their ten guys or something? Like they were just pulling people off the stands to play? I think also teams are just streaky. I mean, last year – the Knicks start off 11 and 15. They were kind of around 500 most of the season. And then they won a, a crazy run at the end of the season. And the record looked pretty good. There were a lot of bad losses last year. There was a loss. I remember uh, they lost the game to Orlando right before they won in that crazy streak where you were like, this game at Orlando, the Knicks just suck. This is going to be a bad end of the season. And then the Knicks just started winning games. Even so in I- the uh, I, I know yeah. they won the Philadelphia game yesterday, but they could have lost that game. And yeah, they had guys yeah. off the street playing for Philadelphia. That was like, that was not a good win, right? That's the like, oh, a win is a win. And at the end of the season, you know, we won the it first all even game against out. Philadelphia. And you just kind of like look at the record, but that was not a pretty win. And kind of going back to like the big guys getting hurt. Uh, uh, what was it against the Cavs? I'm, I'm kind of looking at the stats, but I remember this, like Jared Allen, like crushed them. Jared mm-hmm. Allen had 17 rebounds. 
yesterday, uh, 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 Andre Drummond had what, like 30 rebounds, 40 rebounds. I mean, it was crazy good. First of all, how is Andre Drummond just a backup in our league? Like he just, (laughs) he somehow cannot be a star in the league anymore. He was an all-star like two years ago. He led the league in rebounding, I think, four out of five years, and that fifth year was like, yeah, two years ago. Yeah, I don't know how he's – he's not even that old. Like, two years ago, people were like, this guy getting a max contract, and now everyone's like, I can get him for the league, man. If I'm not mistaken, two years ago, he was still in his 20s. Yeah. The whole thing is weird. I I guess he's just not good on defense. He gets rebounds, but he's – He's one of those guys that's been 32 for the last six years. Yeah. I, I don't know. He's got, like, he, he's got Greg Oden disease. That yes. happened with Gallinari. Right. We were like, isn't he like 45 now? When we'd look, he'd be like 28 years old. <laughs> Man, is that possible? So I, last night was a very ugly win. You got it. Obviously, you got to win the ugly games. Um, but uh, how, how are you feeling about the team right now with all this? Are you feeling confident or like? I, I, I am I am always like glasses half full, uh, honestly. Like I think they're gonna win every game. I think they went out. I think they went out the rest of the season. Uh <laughs> Okay, let's 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 go through some of the players to see what you guys think of where where they are now. Um Randall, he finally had a big night. He finally was nailing his threes last night. Um what's this what do you think the story with him at this point is? I think I, I thought yesterday was like you know, I don't want to say quintessential Randall game because he's really only done this for one year. So it's like, yeah, he doesn't have like four years of all star, all performance. But yesterday's game was like, yeah, they needed him to step it up and win that game for them. And he did. Um, I, he's scoring fewer points, but also like I thought he hit a ridiculous number of like impossible shots last year. Like mm-hmm. he was always like in the corner, time running out almost like Carmelo Anthony back in the day, like just throws the ball up and it went in every time last year. And he hasn't hit those shots, but he hasn't had to because they're, they're like spacing the floor so much better with, with Kemba, with uh, Fournier. Like those guys are massive upgrades over Alfred and, uh, and even Bullock. So. um, One, one, like one issue I think for Randall is kind of knowing one knowing his role with this team, like before he was like, I'm the guy that has to score. Now he's like, I don't always have to be this guy that score, but like he has to adjust, to like letting other guys take over, which I feel, I feel like is a, is a bit of a, a bit of an adjustment for him. Like the world doesn't have to revolve around him when he's out there, but it's also an adjustment because it doesn't have to revolve around him. I think it's an adjustment. Sometimes the, the rest of the team seems to be watching him. And so he has to oh, do his whole yeah. thing. Yeah. Thank you for the follow. Uh, and <laughs> <laughs> that's what happens when people follow us. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> so uh, that's also what happens when uh, when Randall hits a three. Yeah. In yeah. my in my household, at least. One of those cl- eyes closed threes. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, wouldn't it be great if you actually like they had just add that to the broadcast? <laughs> Anytime <laughs> they make a three, they'd be like, oh yeah. <laughs> So yeah, it's um, you know I, I think it I think he's finding that balance and he has a lot more options now to go to. So you know he, it seems like he's doing the right thing more often than not now. It, maybe the first game or two was a little bit of adjustment, but now he's like, oh yeah, these guys can play. Uh, by the way, I, I saw somebody saying that they should trade the Knicks should trade him because Obi's outplaying him, and I don't think I agree with that. Obi's look pretty darn good. Obviously, that's an insane take, but like, it's nice that like Obi's look good enough that people are like, we don't need Randall anymore. I think we need yeah, to pump I mean, the brakes on Obi, that narrative. Obi said, "What is he? Seven points, one rebound. That's that's that replaces a twenty-two point guy." He's, he got <laughs> Obi got four points last night. It's almost the exact same. Yeah, number but if Randall you extrapolate got. that over thirty-six minutes, then you know the uh, <laughs> Obi. Well, so, but here, here's the question: Should, should, uh, should uh, Tibbs be giving Obi more run? Because Obi has looked pretty good at times. Like where though? Where? Like Randall's better. You're just gonna play Obi instead of Randall when Randall's better. It doesn't make sense. Well, maybe like because like Obi will come in the game and leave four minutes later. Maybe Randall plays 34 minutes, like couple take a couple minutes away from Randall, and maybe do a 
Did we do some small ball with the two of them on the, on the floor a little more? If Obi plays 10 minutes instead of eight, you're going to be like problem solved. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I don't know, but I feel like Obi is a weapon the Knicks need to utilize. I mean, um, if he... our if our centers keep getting injured, then Obi is going to get some run at the five. Yeah, I guess I guess when when Noel and Mitch are on the uh, on the injured list for our, you're right. Oh, like with how frail our centers are, the problem will solve itself. I, I think you will see Obi at the at the five of bunch. You're going to see. I think we're going to see a lot of like Obi Julius on the court at the same time for at least the next like three four games, and it'll be really interesting to see how they both space the floor. Well, look at it. Next say- game is um, against the Bucks, and Brooke Lopez is out, so. They're going to be going smaller. It's a perfect opportunity to, to try that out. I mean, Toppin also, uh, his defense has looked a little better. Not like he's obviously not like Noel or Mitch out there, but Toppin's defense has looked a lot better than, than it looked last season. He's a lot more playable now with his defense. I agree. Yeah, he doesn't look like a lost puppy out there, that's for sure. I mean, yeah. last year he was like, where am I? Where's the ball? Oh, my God, I'm on the court. This is yeah. great. <laughs> yeah, this is awesome. <laughs> this is awesome. Hey, Ma, you watching? <laughs> You know what? It's weird. So RJ every year seems to get like better. Each year he improves. Obi Toppin, like he did some stuff last year. He seems to be getting better. I watch Kevin Knox, and every year he kind of looks like he's the exact same player from the year before with zero growth, except for he can kind of hit a three now. Well, he's not going to play anymore. Yeah, well, if, if he's playing any any serious minutes, we're in, in trouble. If he's playing, that, that means all the other Knicks were on a plane that crashed. <laughs> I just think about him like everybody's in knocks out there. He's like, wait, what's this whole defense thing? Uh, no, he figured out his role is to just wait in the corner. And if the ball finds its way to him, he shoots. That's it. Yeah. That's the value. That's what he brought. Um, so Randall, I, I'd also like to see him. So the Knicks are getting killed on offensive rebounds. And I'd like to see Randall crash the boards a little more on offense. I was um, sorry on defense. To, Cause like, we're not there's too many second chances again with a lot of these teams and randall even though he does get a lot of rebounds as it is he could do more with more boxing out because the second chances kind of kill us some nights by the way this is where the the, the randall top in duo i think could shine because top in like whatever you say about him that guy gets down the floor quick he he loves his like fast break dunk points and so the times where like they can get a get a rebound, a defensive rebound, and he's like working down the court, that play has worked out really well. They've they've actually like been able to push the pace a lot faster this year, and I think that's been a that's been a part of it. Right. Everywhere else, Toppin doesn't seem like he knows exactly what to do, but once he starts running, he is a goddamn force. Yeah, he's he's he closes, he finishes right at the basket. That's for sure. He likes um, that. He likes dunking. He's he's a good I, dunker. I want to see him run. I want to see him dunk. I don't want to see him shoot threes anymore because his threes kind of, they look like they're going to hit the roof, the ceiling every night, and they just don't seem to go in. But maybe that'll get better. Um, but he's looked really good. So uh, we like what Randall's been doing. What about Barrett? What do you think of Barrett so far? We're, we are 11 games into the season. What's your th- he Barrett looked awesome for a bunch of games in a row. The last two games have been not so great. Um, what do you think of Barrett right now? I, I think like maybe eight of the games he's looked really, really good. And so he he's definitely improved from last season. This is the third year in the row he's improved. He's he's still super young. And I, I think the Knicks actually I don't wanna call it too early, but I think the Knicks got a draft pick correct. And uh, I, think um, I don't think this is too early. I actually think feel like, like a podcast buzzer for that, like great, you know, like <laughs> yeah, the applause. Woo! I mean, he's arguably the second best player on the team. Yeah, I, I think he's going to be the best player on the team in two five, like within two years. I think he'll be the best player on the team. By the way, if we had a cob, we sorry, if we had a, a buzzer for like when the Knicks get a draft pick right, uh, Jay would be like. Gotta get the cobwebs off this buzzer. We're finally gonna use it. Yeah, for first time, get the WD forty. First time we're gonna use this. Um, so actually, a couple questions from Facebook. Uh, George writes, "Why don't we ever run plays? It's just ISO and kickout." Dave, 
That's a great question. I don't know. I, I feel like with a couple more playmakers and point guards, we should be. I mean, that's the value that Kemba brings or should be bringing. Kemba and Rose, I mean, I kind of like leave the ball in their hands and let them do their thing. Right. Do you think that, like, so, like, right, one of the things we applauded Randall for last year was getting a lot of assists, which is pretty awesome. But it means the ball, he's handling the ball a majority of the time. Do you think, like, that, like, shouldn't the ball, like, shouldn't the ball be in our point guard's hand a little more often? Like, shouldn't Kemba be running the offense, not Randall? The, be- the better you like, the point of having a point guard is to run the offense. Maybe we'd have better results with, like, not just having ISO- ISOs and kickouts. I'd be curious. I haven't seen any like stats on their ISO numbers. I know that it seems like Randall's assist numbers are way down from last year, and that might be a reflection of him not having the ball as much. They, I don't think they're that 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 down actually. Let me look at quick look at this. Um, I think like he's off. Let's see. His assist numbers this year are um, he's five and a half assists a game, and he had six last year, so it's not down that much at all. Our point guards aren't getting that many assists. I think last night was the first time Kemba has ever led the Knicks in assists in the game. Yeah, I think that's I think that's correct. Um, so you kind of want more like you want your point guards to be getting like the two of them should be getting like ten assists a game, and they're not they're not getting that most games. And I don't know if it's because they defer to the to, to Randall too much or like Rose isn't necessarily at, at quite the playmaker he used to be. But you really want more of the action being generated out of the point guard because that would that'll get easier shots for Randall and easier shots for other guys also. I, mean, I, I don't have the numbers to back this up, but the, the point guards that we've got right now are they drive and dish out or they go right to the hole. I mean, they, they dish it out, and I think that's why we're shooting so many threes. Yeah. I mean, I guess the, the Knicks also made a conscious effort to shoot more threes this year, so that's also part of it. In the preseason, Tibbs said, we're going to shoot more threes. Let's not forget, it. it's an entirely new backcourt, and it's only 11 games in, too. So this could look completely different by, like, game 30. Yeah, I mean, the team, you're right. The team has to, they're trying to shoot more threes. They have two guys, 40% of their, their starting lineup, they have to integrate and, like, figure out how to use, how to gel everyone together. Um. There are sometimes where the starting the starting unit looks really good, and sometimes the starting unit looks really like, like what the hell are we watching? Yeah, um, I think I think it's more of a chemistry thing because the talent is there on, on paper. These guys should be scoring a ton of points, and it just seems like uh, sometimes they do. They like, they went berserk uh, against the the Raptors in that first quarter, uh, I, but then like other games, it's like you know then you get the Bucks game the next day, and it's like. The Bucks weren't exactly they, – they were missing a bunch of guys too, and they still just couldn't get it done. So it's it's, it's very like – I think they're still feeling feeling each other out. Do you think Kemba they looks bad? Both... Oh, sorry. Think, go ahead. I was going to say, do you think Kemba looks – Kemba's defense has been bad, but does he look really like hobbled? Because he looks like – he still looks like he's got spring in his step. He still looks pretty fast. I don't think he's hobbled at all. I think he's just a step slower than when he was in his prime. But I don't think he's playing he... injured. Okay, because like I feel like he still should be able to like run the offense like he did, and like I don't see why he couldn't still be like running the offense as a point guard. Like, mm-hmm. like I get his defense not being as good or just being bad to begin with. Jay, those games that you referenced that they started out slow and the one against Toronto where they started out hot, yeah, they're just chucking threes, man. They're just throwing threes up there, and the games yeah. that started slow, they're not hitting them, and the game against Toronto, they couldn't miss. That's like that's the biggest difference between those three games. Fair. Right, right. I mean, the last two games, they haven't been hitting threes, and that's just – they're living di- living and dying by the three. And what do you do, basically, when you're not hitting the three? Do you just keep shooting them, or do you just change your strategy? Well, th- I think the problem comes back to the centers again, because if you're missing your threes and you don't have somebody to eat up those rebounds, then it's, it's just an empty possession. I mean, the Knicks have, in fairness to them, they have a bunch of guys who are above-average three-point shooters – in the course of an A-2 game season, this Nick, Nick shooting a lot of threes probably works out pretty well. Yeah. Like, more times than not, like, no, more times than not, everyone's not going to go cold. Randall will hit, or RJ will hit, or um, Fournier. There's enough guys that can hit threes in this team. IQ has not even been hitting yet this year. Burks has not really been hitting. I was just about to bring that up. Like, 
yeah, their, their starters are shooting a lot and scoring a lot of threes. I'm waiting for the bench to step it up. I'm waiting for IQ to bring some of that magic that he had last year and start hitting those shots because he hasn't been. I, I think he had a I think he had a good game against Philadelphia. Um, but uh, before that, I mean, he was kind of a, a lost man off the bench so far. Uh, same, with, same with Burks. Like he hasn't had one of those massive quarters or stretches like he did last year where he was just, you know, unstoppable. Mm-hmm. The, the thing about Burks is I remember like he was in Utah. I didn't follow him that closely. And I know the Knicks got him last year and I was like, oh, they got Alex Burks. I mean, Alex Burks, like who cares kind of. And then I remember the beginning of the season, he had like three or four 20 point games at the beginning of the season. We were like, holy crap, who is this guy they got? Um, he hasn't done, he hasn't lit it up this year. But he's, he's not suddenly a bad player. You have to think he's going to have some good nights coming up very soon to make a huge difference. To, to be fair, Austin Rivers also had one of those games last year. And I was like, oh, man, heat check, Austin Rivers. This is the best pickup of all time. Mark my words, Austin Rivers will crack the top five by the end of the year. <laughs> Didn't he have, it was like the third quarter where he scored like 25. Like he had crazy amount of points in the third quarter in one of the games. Mm-hmm. Against Denver, I think, actually, before he went to Denver. He had some like crazy like Clay Thompson heat check moment where yeah I think it was Denver he just didn't miss that was yeah like, that was, yeah but either way I mean you have to have I mean having streaky guys that like sometimes can go off is what you need like if like maybe Brooks will go off for you or maybe one night IQ can't miss those kind of things haven't quite happened with the bench players yet but they they should happen going forward um yeah I think there's so- see that's the thing um. Yeah, Anthony said that. They're they're seven and four, but I feel like there's they're not playing anywhere near what I think their potential is. So the fact that their record is pretty good despite that is, is a good sign. Because I, mean, I most, feel most like guys, they should be getting a lot better by halfway through the season. Do, most, do we agree that where they get better is on defense? I mean, yeah. I don't think that like there's a huge like a, a quantum leap they make on the offensive end. I think it's all about whether they're going to guard on the perimeter and whether they can actually like block up the middle, like with their big guys, if they're healthy. Absolutely. I, yeah. Yeah. I, I have to think the, uh, well, I think when, when Noel's been out there, he's been doing a really good job on defense. I, I think he looks better than Mitch has looked out there so far this season. Um, yeah. The problem is the they, cr- they've both missed a bunch of games already. So it's, we need the whole roster playing. That's the that's the Jay, problem. Jay, they're done. They're getting all their missed games out of the way. They're going to be healthy the rest of the way. Uh, that's okay. how it works. That's good. That's good news. You didn't know that? Yeah, if, you, if you average 60 games a season, miss the first 20, then you're good to go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Get them out of the way. Uh, Anthony writes, why all of a sudden the Knicks have been struggling from deep? Is it energy wasted on defense? Literally wasted. Or something every team goes through? I, I I think it's um, I don't think it's something fundamentally wrong with their three point shooting or or even their scheme. I I think it's just some days you have it and some days you don't, and it's been kind of unlucky lately. I think shooters are just streaky. Like if you look at a guy who shoots forty percent for the year, forty percent is awesome from three, but that means he's missing missing obviously sixty percent of the time. And for the most part, that means there are some nights where he's shooting like six for eight and, and a bunch of nights where he's shooting like one for five or one for six. That's just how, that's just how shooting works. Do you think changing the ball is having an effect on some of these guys? Like they're toying around and with it, the synthetic ball and like, I don't know. It didn't, it didn't, I don't think it hurt Steph Curry last night. Didn't Steph Curry have an insane night game? Well, Steph Curry could probably shoot with a Nerf ball and score 60 points. I mean, <laughs> he, can, he can shoot for a, with a shot from half court and make them all. Yeah. There have been a lot more home runs this year. The ball changing is very different. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong spot. Um, yeah, I don't know how much that's affecting things. And also, the Knicks overall, I think, are still shooting pretty well. I mean, up to a couple games ago, the Knicks were the best three-point shooting team in the, in the NBA. Now they've obviously fallen because they've just been shooting poorly. But uh, I'm just saying I, there's a I, lot I, of guys that are shooting really bad. They all happen to be on my fantasy team, but there's a lot of guys that are shooting nowhere near what they normally who, who shoot. Who is it? Who's been terrible? Jason Terry has been an absolute disaster. Um, little known fact, Jason Terry is still in the league. Wasn't he averaging 20 points a game last season? Jason Terry? Not Jason Terry. Uh, uh, Terry Rozier. 
Oh, right. I was like Jason Terry, the guy that uh, RJR Smith like elbowed in the Boston series is still in the league. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what I was <laughs> thinking there. Yeah, Rozier. Oh, Terry Rozier. Oh, he's, oh, he's not hitting, hitting shooting that well. It's look at his numbers. It's it's disgusting. Really, it's not even like it's not. It, it's beyond not shooting well. It's wasn't he it's the guy problem. Terry Rozier was the guy that you did not want to come to the Knicks because you thought he was a bad shooter because there was like a rumor the Knicks would get him a couple of years ago. Um, and then he then he learned how to shoot, and Jay was like, "Oh, I really want him." And now he's he's shooting. By the way, he's shooting twenty five percent three. That's pretty bad. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Doncic actually has been shooting pretty poorly from three. Also, he's shooting thirty five percent from the field. I mean, this is a guy who shot forty five and thirty nine last season and averaged twenty points a game. Yeah, shooting is tricky though. Like he'll he'll probably have a bunch of games where he shoots really well. That's just kind of how it works. I hope so. Kevin Porter Jr. has been even worse. Um, you know who's been even worse than Kevin Porter? Michael Porter. He's been terrible. Yeah. Well, now he's now he's injured, too. Yeah. Kevin, um, Kevin Porter's shooting almost the same as Terry, uh, only he's averaging five turnovers a game, too. I, I think a lot, of, a lot of this, though, is like, if the Knicks, like, Miles Turner is not going to, like, guys like that are not going to go off on the Knicks all the time. Miles Turner or Ricky Rubio. It just sometimes there's by random chance some guys get hot on a given night and I mean the Knicks need to like obviously contest more threes but I I think this stuff will really even out I don't think this theme will continue the rest of the season. There Famous was last element, words. There there was an element of luck last year. I mean their their three point defense they were at what tops in the league or top three in the league in three point top. defense. Um, yeah, I, you know. There were a lot of open threes last year too. They just they didn't go in in a lot of those games. Yeah, I think, I think it'll balance out. But you know the, 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 the one thing I notice is every like the Knicks get a lot of open threes also. Like every team gets a lot of open threes. Most threes aren't contested. Like just you, like you think about any game, you usually you usually say like how often are there's a guy? Like how often do you watch guys shoot contested threes? Or maybe I'm watching the Knicks too much. Yeah, I've seen other games where it seems pretty contested. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like the Knicks get a lot of uncontested threes off every game. Mm-hmm. I mean, it depends on on your ball movement. You yeah. Know, it, it, honestly, if if you keep swinging the ball around, you're going to get an open shot eventually. It's just it, the Knicks right. like to go ISO a little bit, and, and it slows the ball down and gives time for the defenders to get back. I think the biggest thing the Knicks are doing is like they have to they have to not double as much and they don't have to cheat to, they have to stop cheating to the paint. Yeah, I think the doubling thing is the more like one guy doubles and because that guy doubles the next guy has to double and like it just like creates us it makes it easy for a guy to get open. Mm-hmm. Um, Paul writes, how much should we have paid Lonzo? The Lonzo's, Knicks group are not getting Lonzo ball. Lonzo's looking good. Yeah, who, looking who would you rather have, Lonzo or Kemba? I mean, Kemba's a lot cheaper. I don't know, Dave. What do you think? I I was I was a huge advocate that they get ball last year. I mean, in the off season, but you know, I was happy with Kemba. I think give Kemba a shot. Like, I I don't think IQ is like going to be the answer at point guard, and, and Kemba's sort of like holding a spot for him. Um, I wanted it to be ball because I think long term he would have been the guy. They look good yeah. in Chicago. Chicago looks good right now. Chicago looks really good. I mean, the thing with Lonzo also is like his defense is pretty awesome, um, which is which it, it would be nice to have a point guard that can play defense, um, who could also play f- offense. Uh, to any any Frank fans who are gonna raise their hand, and go, we had Frank. Oh God! So Anthony um, just said that there's a stat that said the Knicks have allowed more than a hundred three pointers where the defender is at least five feet away. Yeah, Mark said that earlier. They've given up the most open threes by far that was a stat they talked about at the during the philadelphia game yesterday yeah i I guess that's a really ridiculous i guess you could you can cheat to the committal you can basically kind of leave guys and kind of try to like contest them as try to like jump out at them you shouldn't be five feet from the bat basket there's there is too often for the knicks there's a guy basically will shoot against them where no one even tries to go out. But like the, the Knicks are just like, ah, you just take the three. We're not even gonna try. Yeah, to I consider out. two feet open. Five feet is like wide open. Yeah, five feet sounds like you're just like practicing shooting threes. Yeah. 
anyone can hit a five like five foot open three in the NBA. They all like this. This is why like uh, Turner is hitting them in the Indiana game. Like he was mm-hmm. wide open. Right. Yeah. I mean, Willie I mean, Cauley Stein hit wide open threes in his practice video. Right. They say basically, if you go to the gym, basically, like when the guys are practicing, every one of these guys can just like rate, like just just hit three after three after three because it's not not during a real game. Yeah. Um, yeah, these guys are better than you th- than most people think. I, I think I mentioned it earlier. Somebody was saying like, somebody tweeted, "Can you score on Matumbo?" And people were like responding like. Is he in his prime? It's like, oh, or no, am I, uh, well, am I in my prime? It's like, it doesn't matter if you're in your prime. You're not scoring on Matumbo. Like, <laughs> so ridiculous. People are like, well, I'll just drive around him. And it's, no, you won't. No, you won't. I, I, in middle school, I knew someone who said to me, or maybe it was like, maybe it was freshman year of high school, who was like, he just didn't like Shaq. And he's like, Shaq's just big. And that's all he does. Like, he's like, you could beat Shaq one-on-one. Like, as long as you get threes, Shaq can't, he's, he's not fat. I'm like, You'll never get a shot off against Shaq. He will block everything you do. He will make you cry. Even fat, I'm on the Celtic Shaq, is faster than the average human being. Yeah, they just look, they look slow because everyone around them is just faster, but like they're still like superhumans. Yeah. Mark, Mark, what's your, what's your, what's your shooting percentage from half court? That's, that's all like, that's the number that matters there. (laughs) Three quarter Um, court. (laughs) Stuck it. That's your short, that's your scoring opportunity there. That would be the only way, like, uh, well, if I could just, if I could shoot really well while I'm running towards the other basket, that would be the best way I could beat Shaq. Back, back to the, the ball versus Kemba question. I think, um, like, I think offensively, they're kind of like a, it's a bit of a wash. Defensively, though, Kemba's getting killed. Like, mm-hmm. look at the, look at the difference in plus minus numbers between the two of them. I think Kemba's the worst on the team, or certainly the worst. I think he's he's like a negative four right now, in plus minus, mm-hmm. and Ball is like a plus six. That's a that's a pretty big swing, and I think that's all on defense. Yeah, I would agree. Right. With that. Yeah, I mean they, they both, as far as three point shooting, like it's not like Ball's the most gifted offensive player. He is. He's he's a, he's become a decent shoot, three point shooter. He's a, he's a he's not bad. Like he's obviously a good passer, but. You're right. He doesn't give that much more than Kemba gives right now as far as offense. It's really the defense that makes a huge difference. I mean, for what the Knicks are trying to do on offense, Kemba's hitting 45% from three. That's yeah. That's pretty good. I think that's good. That's, that's pretty good. Spe- pretty good, I mean, right? Speaking of their backcourt, so I've noticed that uh, Tibbs doesn't always have faith in Fournier to have him out there at the end of games. What do, what do, you, th- what do you think about that? Do you think Fournier should be always out there at the end of games? I think he's a top five player on the team. I don't. I'm always confused when he's not out there. It. He was like the best guy in Orlando for like the last seven years. I. I don't know. I I don't understand it. I really don't. I mean, I have to assume basically. Uh, I mean, forty is defense, better than a uh, Kemba, but like it's not great defense. Yeah, but he either. went with IQ over Fournier multiple games this season, and Fournier is better than IQ. I mean, do you choose trust in Tibbs? You're like, I like when Tibbs experiment. Like, I'm he can experiment as much as he wants. He's earned he's earned that right. Or uh, do you, are you really like Tibbs doesn't know what he's doing? Tibbs who just won four. He's who's by the way. We should mention that Tibbs just won his 400th game, um, and he's the third highest winning percentage of NBA coaches in, in I guess, in NBA history. Yeah, so I'm gonna go with uh, the answer that's not he doesn't know what he's doing. I don't. I, I didn't mean to like just to do that, but like I, I do like when he experiments a little bit because I like when he goes, he figures out the hot hand, or I, I like not being rigid about who's out there at the end of games. And maybe like Fournier has been is a really good player, but maybe Tibbs just feels Fournier doesn't have it that night. If it's a situational, he doesn't have it that night. That's fine. But if he just thinks IQ is better, then I'm gonna raise my eyebrows very high i i think iq has been doing more than he than he's been iq is de- giving a lot of effort on defense he's not been hitting a lot of threes he, but he's been trying to run the offense he, clearly he's impressing tips which says something at least also forney is on my fantasy team so i think he should be playing the entire fourth quarter <laughs> jay's like i just want 48 minutes from every night just like <laughs> I, I, 
And by the way, can Fournier block some shots? I need more of those. I definitely do. <laughs> um, Is that so it for our what's questions? Com- yeah, that was it for our questions. What's coming up this week? We have um, we got the Bucks tomorrow night. Uh, we got uh, pay. Wait, let me pull, pull the schedule. Yeah, we have home home versus the Bucks tomorrow. So home is going to be another loss. What do you think? Knicks can't win at home anymore. Bucks are really banged up right now. They're missing like three so, starters, so it's a good good opportunity. So we're before the next, have, we're not going to have any centers too, though. I mean, that's going to be a this is going to be a fast paced, lots of three point shot game. Yeah, it's going to so, be a one twenty seven, one twenty four final. Is this confirmed? I know Noel had the knee injury. Do we have an update on what 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 the deal with? Like, is he out? They're, they're both. Yeah. They're both questionable for tomorrow, which which you know means no. I know it sounds crazy, but the Knicks should have brought back uh, Norvell Pell, who probably they still could bring back. Um, he could block some shots. He looked kind of decent. He gives a little more that, like, I mean, we need another backup point, backup center. You just diss Sims. I, I Sims, I like Sims, but uh, if we really want to win games, I don't think we can have Sims out there. By the way, Mark brought up uh, Norvell like six times at the Cavs game. <laughs> I know he he Mark is like he complains Maybe. about Frank stands, but then talks about Norvell Pell like he's he's the, the Norvell Pell center. could block some shots. He could he could protect the rim. If you don't have if you don't have Noel out there and you don't have Mitch out there and Taj can't play the entire game, it'd be nice to have another center. So mm-hmm. I am totally down with um, with Toppin playing some major minutes at center tomorrow. I thought we already agreed that we're getting Joaquin back. Go, That's go true. earn those dollars. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> It'd be great if anyone like the Knicks had a bad contract on, they could just force him back. They're like, Eddie Curry, get in shape now. You owe us. I mean, the Knicks are always paying somebody who's not on the team, so they can keep that going. So the, they have uh, they home have, versus have, the Bucks, and then they have away at Charlotte, and then home against then home uh, Indiana, Indiana before next episode. Well, yeah, what's our predictions here? If. Sorry, I'm just looking at the schedule. Come back okay. to me. Come back to me on okay. that. Okay. <laughs> okay, Jay. What's your predictions? I'm gonna say two and one. Okay. I think they uh I think they beat the Bucks again just to, to make us get on this, oh, the Knicks are world beaters train again. And then they lay a complete egg against Charlotte to make us really depressed on a Friday. And uh and then they get revenge against the Pacers. Wouldn't it be great? Like the Knicks are like playing Milwaukee first round, and everyone's like, "The Knicks beat Knicks were four zero against Milwaukee. They're gonna they're gonna stomp all over them." But, by the <laughs> way, for their their seven wins, like how good do you feel right now? Two against Philly, Boston, Chicago, Milwaukee. I mean, they're 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 just kind of racking up those important wins early in the season. So Philly oh, yeah. lost to the Knicks, then won five in a row, and then lost to the Knicks. That's pretty good. It's pretty good. I mean, I mean, pretty, we just have to be kind of, kind of keep it quiet that no one played for Philly last night. But uh, <laughs> well, though they all played except for Simmons, the first win. Yeah, that's true. And Simmons is not playing the season, so uh, or maybe he'll play at some point this season. Who knows? And uh, Chicago, I don't know. I mentioned Chicago. They beat them too. Those yeah, the big. Chicago was a pretty big, big win. I mean, too. Chicago looks pretty awesome, so that was a pretty big win, also. Yeah, Anthony called it. According to Nick's Twitter, we need Sims, Grimes, and McBride all playing 30 minutes a game. Every time the Knicks blow a game, I look on Twitter and someone's like, if they only have a Grimes in there, they'd win. And, and McBride, they would have won the game. I'm like, these guys have spent no time in the NBA. They're not going to change the game for us. You know the guy so actually, who has 11 minutes of experience? He would have made the difference over the guy with 10 years experience. You know, I was curious about this. So uh, the Knicks picked, uh, they picked a um, McBride at 35 or 32, and they picked Grimes at 25, right? Mm-hmm. So I looked at I looked at all the players taken from 20 to 35. I was just curious, because the, the Knicks fans are going crazy. Like, how could, at least a, a small segment of Twitter is going crazy and be like, like, Grimes needs to play, McBride needs to play. How is Tim not putting them in? I look and picks 20 through 35, no one else is playing either. There was one guy that played like he's playing 15 minutes a game. I forget who it was. No one, everyone else has barely seen the court. 
The fact yeah. that Tim, the Knicks aren't playing them, it's pretty much what everyone else is doing with the same, with like the 15 picks around them. I bet most of those guys aren't even in the league. They're probably in the G League right now. That's that's hard to get floor time. That's not surprising. Yeah, if you pick a guy 25 or 35, they normally don't play a lot. We just, I mean, we had, we had, um, we had IQ last year and made us think that like the guys pick 25 should play major minutes right away. But it's not normally how it works on a good team, at least. Yeah, I was upset that the Knicks didn't take uh, James Booknight. And yeah. he has, for the season, zero points on uh, 0 for 5 shooting. So I feel a little better about that. The guy, and I forget the name of the guy, the, the guy who won 20th or 21st, the one that Knicks should, could have taken with their pick. Yeah. Um, and they traded. And he looked pretty good in, in the summer league or had a, a couple good dunks at least. I was like, I wonder how he's doing. He's played, I think, two minutes so far this season. Yeah. I mean, I mean, all these guys might end up being good. It's just like typically guys don't. Typically, if you're a top ten pick, you're playing a lot. Typically, you're, if you're later, you're not playing so much yet. Exactly. So, uh, uh, is that it for our questions? Yeah, yeah, Dave. What's your prediction? Milwaukee, Charlotte, Indiana. All right. I, I, I also, I, I don't want to echo Jay, but I think two and one. I think Charlotte is a gotcha game. I think ball goes off. They give up a ton of threes. It's on the road. I think they're going to even out that whole home road record thing. I think that they win some games at home. I don't think this is like their thing. They're going to, they're going to step up at the garden. They just uh, didn't play because we were there. <laughs> yes. I, 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 I do doom the Knicks. When the Knicks won like those 12 or 13 games with Jeremy Lin, I was at that 13th game when they lost. <laughs> uh, the, the, uh, I'm going to take the, I'm going to say they probably lose to Milwaukee and then they beat Charlotte and beat Indiana. Okay, so we're all saying two and one. Yeah, I, I, I struggle. I kind of want to say three and zero. I want to say seventy five and zero from here. But uh, yeah, I mean that would be really impressive. Because I mean they play extra games in the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so uh, yeah, we are NY Knicks podcast on Facebook, Instagram, Patreon, Twitter. Uh, the New York Knicks podcast dot com is our website. Um, do you have yeah, a uh, do you have a Twitter, Dave? Do you want everyone to follow you on Twitter? I don't have a Twitter. Good. Uh, I, follow, stay off I follow Steve Martin and Mike and Ian, Michael Ian Black. That's okay. It. So, so follow <laughs> Michael Ian Black and Steve Martin. That's what Dave's asking you to do. Um, yeah. Last question to you, Dave. Make a couple predictions, or make one or two predictions for the end for the rest of the season. Two bold predictions for you. All right, bold prediction. R.J. Barrett is an All Star this year. That's a bold prediction. That's my bold prediction. Okay. I'm going big on RJ. Okay. He's, I have to say, the fact that he is 21, and I am thinking he's a Nick for life, the, he's going to be so good over the next five five to ten years. It's going to be crazy. right? When he's 28, we're going to be like, I cannot believe we have the best player in the NBA. Anthony wants to hear you talk about your stupid Jokic tweet that got us a thousand hate <laughs> messages and made my phone okay. almost Break. Okay. Okay. So, Dave, you used to play the Jokic play last night. Do you know what I'm talking about? So last night, um, in the Denver game against who's Morris on? What, what team was he on? Oh, I know what you're talking about. The heat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Heat. Oh, you know the Heat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so Morris cheap shotted Jokic fine, and then uh, when Jokic was walk was kind of jogging away, Jokic came from behind and like elbowed him in the back and knocked him down. And I, I think the first tweet I said sent was something like, uh, "I look like Jokic's trying out for the nineteen ninety for the nineties Knicks." And then I was like, "Ah, a guy got actually got hurt on this play." So then I said the next tweet was basically, uh, "He should be basically he should be suspended," uh, which I think he should be suspended. I don't think like a cheap shot like that and from behind it's a pretty dangerous play. And Twitter's response to that was, "You're a pussy. Um, Jokic should have killed his family." And spit on their graves, um, and you're a pussy. We got like Twitter did really, not like the idea of, of punishing Jokic for that. Really, really running the spectrum there. I mean, there's no hyperbole at all. <laughs> I, I have to say, people were like going off. I, I said he should be suspended, and people were going off on that. Basically, they're like, "Come on, Marquis Morris deserved it. He's a horrible." They were like, "Morris is a horrible." 
he, you know, he's a dirty player. He deserves anything he gets. Jokic should hit him again. Like, people were, were really going off. Did it wasn't Morris the guy that like took the ball and like slammed it on the other guy's head in the preseason like last I mean, year? That's what he does. I think that was that was that was the other one. That was the one that played for the Knicks. That was his brother. Okay. Yeah, I mean they're dirty players, no question. But uh, I mean Jokic's a dirty player too. So I have my phone set to give a notification anytime somebody even likes a tweet we're mentioned in, and one tweet saying you shouldn't be allowed to tweet has almost nine hundred responses. So. <laughs> Jay's phone lit on fire. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not happy with you today for on your uh, Twitter behavior, Mark. I, I, I mean, I think Jokic's shot at him was much worse than what Morris did. I think it should be a lengthy suspension. I think it should be like ten games. I may be in the minority here, but I don't think you should hit hitting a guy from behind. I think it's a lot worse. Let's That's put up a, a Twitter poll. What was worse, That's Morris's worse. cheap shot, Jokic's cheap shot, or Mark's tweet about it? I think I think the tweet, my, my tweet about it wins the landslide for it to be the worst. I think you're yeah. gonna win this one, Mark. Congrats. <laughs> yeah. Can we get the oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah? Yeah, we need another. We need another follower in the show on an oh yeah. Um, okay, so Dave, thank you for joining the show. Hopefully, you'll feel that the team is relevant uh, enough to be on again before twelve years. Another twelve years. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That was fun, guys. Yeah, yeah. When RJ makes the All Star game, I'll be here. Sounds awesome. good. All right. Yeah. Uh, thanks for joining, and we'll be back soon. This is the end. You have fun, Dave? That was awesome. Cool. <laughs> thanks, thanks for having me, guys. That was fun. Yeah, that was uh, good. Hope, hope I did all right. First time on a podcast. You it was fine. It did great, actually. Well, happy to do it again. Just let me know when, if I can get the kids to bed. Yeah, the aligning of the times. This is better because you're in New York. It's easier. Yeah. What, what time's your flight uh, tomorrow? Uh, it's an 11.30 flight, so get on the road at 9.00. No Get back to Seattle. Hope for that. Yeah. Anyway, cool. Okay. Good to meet you, Jay. Talk yeah, to you later. too. Okay. Better do. Is Kat not home yet? Uh, no. She should be home any second. Okay. Uh, um, I thought we. Were, yeah, I was. I, I was mean, looking to see if. I was waiting for you to cut us off at nine forty-five. She, that, she's so. usually home at nine forty-five, but. Uh, every once in a while, surgery goes late, so she's. Uh... What? So her shift now is she gets home this time. She's. Yeah. Like she's doing this. Yeah. I mean, she get she gets off of work, normally at nine thirty, and it's a fifteen minute drive. Okay. So it just means something went late today. Oh, by the way, um, I told I told you how I got hit by a car, like I'm yeah. rear ended. Yeah. Um, then I told you I tell you how the person hired a lawyer and they yeah. were like trying to make a claim. So um, I, I have the rental now for while I'm waiting for my car to get repaired. Mm -hmm. And my rental yesterday, got, got hit by a car. Oh, my God. Is it bad? No, it's not bad at all. They just, That's like, it. bumped me while I – it was the same thing. I was basically uh, – I was basically waiting at a stop sign. Mm -hmm. I was waiting to turn, and the person behind me just hits me. They, they thought I was going to make the turn before. I was waiting for a car to go. Maybe something I'm doing is giving off signals that you should hit me. But uh, there's, like – there's, like, there's – there probably is a couple hundred dollars worth of damage to the car. Um, but I was just like, I can't even fucking believe this just happened again. I blame cell phones. Yeah. I mean, I tried to record the guy in video, like confessing, but he didn't really confess on video. And I have like this video that I'm going to send to the insurance company. That's me pretty mediocre. <laughs> Can you please just say, yes, I did it in front of this live camera. Yeah, that's pretty much what I wanted to do. <laughs> the guy's like, you're not going to record my face. I'm like, no, I'm not. As I like tilt the phone up to his face. 